Good morning, and welcome to the fourth annual Internal Truth and Reconciliation Forum. I am Autumn LaRose Smith, University of Saskatchewan Students' Union President, SUNTEP student, and your MC for today. This day provides us an opportunity to gather together in a good way to constructively and respectfully discuss and plan for the university environment we hope for. As we begin today, I respectfully ask that you turn off your notifications, put your cell phone down, and focus on the importance of the day and the discussion. I would like to acknowledge Elder Peter Nippy and Elder Nora Cummings, who have graciously agreed to join us today. Elder Peter Nippy will now open our event in a good way in prayer and grounding remarks. Greetings to all of you. And I want to greet every one of each and every one of you that are participating in this uh, Zoom v virtual presentation. I've been given tobacco here to say an opening prayer. And uh, one of the things I'm going to use my language to say a prayer that everybody has a good day, especially at these times we're in right now, in COVID times with the variant surging, that I hope Creator hears our prayer, that everything goes well, we have a safe meeting wherever we are and wherever we go with our families, our home fires. So with that, I'm going to say a, a few, a, uh, I'm going to say a prayer and then a few words after that. With that, I want to I wanna say a few words in terms of what we're meeting here for. Being at the crossroads with this truth and reconciliation is so vitally important. When we talk about reconciliation, people coming together and reconciling the differences of the past. The most important teachings the old people used to say is, Pone etan. Pone etan is forgiveness. But you have to be honest to be truthful. So when we talk about truth and reconciliation, it's about the minds and the hearts meeting and speaking the truth with no hidden agenda. We've come a long ways in what we're trying to do 
in terms of what has happened in the past. The only way we'll be able to do it is when we come together and we meet at a crossroads to be able to cross. When we're able to cross together with respect and humility, we will be able to gain better ground. And the most important thing is that we have to be honest with each other. And the courage to be able to stand up to those truths we don't want to talk about. Especially when we talk about truth and reconciliation. The truth behind reconciliation is we have to talk about the underlying issues, the core issues of racism. And racism is taught, it's a learned behavior. And it's because somebody feels one up, one down. There's got to be an equilibrium. And how do we do that? To have open minds. And we have to engage in discussions. We have to engage in dialogues. And the most important thing too when we do that is to be respectful. It's easy to talk respect. It's easy to talk about that. But how do we role model it through actions, behavior, and attitude? And it has to be constructive. When I hear for the past several years, truth and reconciliation, people say, get over it. You cannot just get over it. That's a cop out when you say get over it. You need to speak to the truth. You need to get to the core of the issues. And the core of the issues, yes, starts with racism. When one person thinks they're better than the other, and we need to talk about that, and we need to have common ground. The hardest thing about truth and reconciliation is to speak truth. Because we live in a society where people don't want to hear the truth. And we need to open the doors to be able to discuss issues that has plagued, especially First Nations people, since the beginning of colonization, and also the most important thing, since the beginning of treaties. Treaties were documents that fostered partnership and sharing based on respect. So we need to talk about the narratives history has given us. And the most important thing, we need to be proud of who we are. I'm proud to be a Soto Cree human being. I use those terms because that's the way I grew up being taught by the dominant society. But my true identity is a Nakoe Nehi Hau. That I'm very proud of. Today, I'm proud of my heritage. I'm proud of who I am. And the most important thing is that being able to work together. That's the challenging part. One of the things I've come to experience through my life is to choose principles over personalities. That way you're able to foster and engage in in a constructive dialogue, not a destructive dialogue. That's what my hope, truth and reconciliation is all about. And the most important thing, we need to engage in compassionate dialogue. We really need to engage in a dialogue where truth is spoken. Not to have a tea party, I call, but to really talk about reconciliation. How do we do that? Mama was Oskaing, being able to go across together at a crossroads, but being able to respect each other's differences, and be, and the most important thing is respecting each other's space. Whether you're an indigenous person, whether you're not, whether you're non-First Nation, ex respecting each other's space, and that's got to. That's got to be truthful reconciliation through actions, behavior, and above all, attitude. When we take ownership, accountability, and responsibility, we, we show it through our actions, behavior, and attitude. So I hope you guys, we have a good day today. I encourage you, engage in compassionate dialogue and be open-minded. So with that, I just want to encourage you, 
Let's all have a good meeting. It's a beautiful day, day today. Hi, hi. Nanaskumten. Thank you very much for your opening words. It's an honor to have you with us today. I'm now pleased to introduce Bob Badger, who will share a land acknowledgement on our behalf for the opening of this event. He will also be performing the Treaty 6 Honor Song. Following his performance, Amanda Goller will sing the Métis National Anthem for us, accompanied by Kiefer Paul on guitar. My name is Go Nitinue Maganuk. I want to bring a land acknowledgement on behalf of uh, Treaty 6 and the, and the land of many Indigenous nations. When I was a little boy, my, my old people, we would travel around and just before we got into a reserve, my grandpa would go out and he would put down an offering on the ground. And I would ask him, why did you do that, grandpa? And then he would tell me, because there's ancestors that lived here before we came here. I want to acknowledge them. So I want to utilize this song and use it as an as a, as a acknowledgement to the ancestors of Treaty 6 territory. <clears throat> performances. Thank you so much. Joining us now to share a few words is USAS President and Vice Chancellor Peter Stoichev. Thank you Autumn for the introduction and for serving as MC for today. Autumn LaRose Smith is also the USSU President, a SUNTEP student, and if not busy enough in those roles, she served on the organizing committee for today's event. I'd like to thank Salto Elder Peter Nippy, and Elder Nora Cummings for their words and prayers. This event would not be possible without Elder and traditional knowledge keepers' support, wisdom, and guidance. 
Thank you to Bob Badger for both the land acknowledgement and performing the Treaty 6 Honour Song. And thank you to Amanda Goler for performing the Métis National Anthem. Greetings to the dignitaries joining us virtually today, and thank you to the organizing committee for today's forum event. This includes Jackie Ottman, our host today, Jackie's team, and the many others who have made today possible. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to attend this event. Your presence signifies the importance of learning about and experiencing truth and reconciliation for you individually and for all of us to demonstrate a commitment to beginning, deepening and reaffirming our relationships with one another. We need to engage in this journey as a community for reconciliation to take hold and to be sustained over time. We are moving into the sixth year of the release of the 94 Truth and Reconciliation Calls to Action and the six years since the University of Saskatchewan hosted the National Building Reconciliation Forum. That first national event was attended by over 300 participants and another 800 people watched it by live stream. Following that first event, the National Forum moved the following year to the University of Alberta and from there to the University of Manitoba and then to other Canadian universities since. This year, Université Laval and the Université de Quebec Network in partnership with numerous Indigenous organizations, will host the sixth edition of the National Building Reconciliation Forum from September 21st to the 23rd. It's important to note that Universities Canada now oversees the national events to ensure that they continue to involve students, staff, researchers, administrators, and leaders of all kinds from all across the country. These forums are focused on reconciliation and they provide space for truth-telling and storytelling, spaces to actively listen, engage in meaningful dialogue on relationship building. It's also important to remember that it was during the first national forum hosted here that then Senator Murray Sinclair said, education is the key to reconciliation. Those words have helped guide our steps and reaffirm the role universities play in this critical work. I'm not able in these remarks to tell you the scope of everything that has happened since that National Building Reconciliation Forum or since our first internal forum held in 2017, but I will say that those two events were centered on sharing and showcasing the broad work of building reconciliation and indigenizing the university. Since last year's gathering, a lot has happened in our world. We have been faced with a global pandemic and have had to react and then respond to the severity of it. Our attention was also jarringly drawn to the violent treatment of Indigenous and Black peoples, and we consequently saw the force of the Black Lives Matter movement. Many in our world joined the movement against racism, oppression, and discrimination. These challenges are daunting, and as a university, we have once again reflected on our responsibility to justice, equity, inclusion, and diversity. In order to develop deep reconciliation roots, we have had to address systemic racism and oppression within our campuses. On June 17th, I stated that acting does not necessarily mean just calling out unacceptable behavior and attitudes, although that must continue where it's happening and begin where it's not. Acting calls for the dismantling of institutional structures, policies, and processes that contribute to inequalities faced by marginalized groups. Acting also means being well informed by history and current realities and asking questions that open new ways of thinking through research and learning. It means challenging the status quo and changing our opinions. And it means leading and contributing to the discussions that universities are ideally suited to provide. In this statement, I also identified seven initiatives that our university would undertake to be a more welcoming place for all. And I can say that we have made progress in all of them the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion or EDI strategy and action plan has been approved by our governing bodies and it has a very active group of champions who are promoting important EDI work across the entire campus. We are reviewing the discrimination and harassment prevention services policies and processes to become more proactive and accessible. Unconscious bias training has begun for all senior administrators and for search committee work training that will permeate the university workforce. To help ensure a University of Saskatchewan culture that is inclusive for all students, 
the University of Saskatchewan Students Union and my office have developed an anti-racism, anti-oppression charter, which has been signed in conjunction with today's event. We entered into a strategic alliance with the Saskatchewan Human Rights Commission to activate the citizenship principles at this university of being enlightened, ethical, empowered, engaged, and empathetic. We continue to work with and contribute to the Saskatoon Anti-Racism Network and employees will benefit from actively participating in anti-racism training. In addition to this, as of January of this year, we now have a special advisor to the president on anti-racism and anti-oppression. Dr. Verna St. Denis has been leading the president's executive committee through anti-racism, anti-oppression training, and she will lead similar training with our senior leadership forum. Dr. St. Denis is also the chair of the Anti-Racism, Anti-Oppression Committee that has been established through the Office of the Vice Provost Indigenous Engagement. This committee is working on an anti-racism and anti-oppression policy, providing suggestions for academic offerings and implementing educational opportunities for the entire university. Eugene Archond, in case you have not had the pleasure of meeting him, is a knowledge keeper. He is also a residential school survivor Eugene was in attendance at the first National Truth and Reconciliation Forum hosted at our university in 2015. I wanted to mention that he has attended and participated in our annual Internal Truth and Reconciliation Forums for many years. And today, he will be joining us again as one of the four witnesses for this event. Eugene, on behalf of all of us, I thank you for all that you have done and continue to do. You have given us a lot of guidance as we move forward in responding to the calls to action from the TRC report. I would also like to mention His Worship Mayor Charlie Clark, Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations Chief Bobby Cameron, Métis Nation Saskatchewan President Glenn McCallum, and Minister of Advanced Education, the Honourable Jean Mikowski, who have all provided their greetings for today. We appreciate the collaborative work that we've done to strengthen reconciliation for our organizations. This work will benefit our communities and society. We cannot do this work alone. I think it's wonderful that we are gathered here to ensure that day after day, year after year, we are good stewards for the future of those children not yet born. It is common for people to ask, what have you done? What have you accomplished over the last six years? The short answer, is that reconciliation work requires us to be active, ongoing, committed, and meaningfully engaged in relationship building. We have accomplished much, but this work requires us to stay diligent, intentional, and courageous, and to be open to new learning. It requires us to be humble. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Stoichev. We appreciate your continued support for this event. I am honoured to introduce Dr. Jacqueline Ottman, Vice Provost Indigenous Engagement. She will be providing us with an overview of the practices and protocols that will guide how our day will move forward. Anin Nidina Maganatuk, Nizawekamegopepa Motang Dizinakas. Hello, all my relations. My name is Jackie Ottman, and I'm Vice Provost of Indigenous Engagement at the University of Saskatchewan. It is with humility that I welcome you to Mamawi Asotitan. Mamawi Asotitan. Let's cross this together. The fourth annual internal Truth and Reconciliation Forum. Our theme this year is Theories, Principles, and Practices of Anti Racism and Anti Oppression. This past year has been unprecedented on many levels. There has been a convergence of events resulting in instability and uncertainty. The world has been jolted to a stop by COVID-19. Then many people around the world were shaken by and responsive to the horrific images of violence and stories of racism and oppression. These instances had me reflecting, voicing and acting on what I value. Silence not being an option as it communicates volumes and may imply the acceptance of the status quo. I value my Soto Anishinaabe heritage. I value equity, truth, courage, respect, honesty, wisdom, and humility. 
As this day unfolds and after it, I hope that you too will consider your values, principles, and how you bridge them into action and practice, particularly those connected to our theme of anti-racism and anti-oppression. How do you define these terms? Last year's Internal Forum was amazing and so impactful. We were taught by incredible people, and these teachings and stories have stayed with me. I remember saying to Eugene Arcand at the end of it, how do we top this event? He wisely said, there's no need to outdo this year's event. Just let next year's forum present itself, and it has. As in so many situations this year, for this forum, we've had to reimagine, recreate, redirect, and pivot into new spaces to visit, meet, and gather. Here we are today, hosting our internal forum on truth and reconciliation virtually, and focusing on strong local voices. I have looked forward to this day for a while now. So how will we move through this day? in diverse groupings and in groupings based on similar knowledge levels. These functioning on the principles of ethical spaces to ethical relationality. At this year's forum, the concepts of ethical space and relationality frame opportunities for our diverse university community to actively listen and respectfully converse with each other to consider the varying convergent and divergent points, orientations, and perspectives. In this way, complexity is experienced and valued for the potentially dynamic synergies it cultivates. With this in mind, participants have been intentionally divided into diverse groups for a portion of the day, and also groupings based on self-identified knowledge bases related to anti-racism to engage in constructive dialogue. In consideration of the overarching theme for this year, we hope that along with the panelists, you will consider the following questions. How does systemic racism hinder reconciliation? How does anti-racism education contribute to reconciliation? Within each breakout room, there will be a facilitator who has already volunteered to guide the group through the questions and dialogue. The suggested formats for sharing within the breakout rooms is the talking circle. The guidelines for the talking circle come from the document, Our Words, Our Ways, Teaching First Nations and Métis and Inuit Learners. Please go to the website for these particular guidelines. Throughout the day, witnesses will be joining breakout rooms to listen for themes and provoking ideas. Witnessing is evident in many cultures and is done in many ways. The four witnesses will share their stories at the end of the forum, a retelling and interpretation of what they felt, saw, and heard. The college witnesses' stories will be shared by the OVPIE in the Mamawi Atsotitan, let's cross this together, internal truth and reconciliation forum report. We encourage the attendees of the forum to create a reconciliation art piece, a drawing or a poem. There are so many creative ways to do this. The unique creation is a symbol of good and right relations, building and creating together and trusting the process of truth to reconciliation. Please upload these images to the website, and at the end of the forum, we will ask participants to view the USASC reconciliation collage. We also encourage those that need more time with their art piece to send us a picture. We'll take these pictures to form a pictorial reconciliation quilt. Next, you will be invited to gift your art to another participant, symbolizing today's learning journey, or you can gift your art to someone who was not able to make it to, to today's event. Please share significant learnings from the fourth annual internal truth and reconciliation event when passing on your creation. We recognize that this topic can be challenging and may be triggering for some people. We will have support available. 
please refer to the resources page on the conference website for ways to access this support. Gitimigwich for listening, and I hope that this day will be meaningful and fruitful for you. Thank you, Dr. Ottman, for your insights and direction.